Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show and we're going to be doing some good old predator fishing for pike. What I'm going to use, I'm going to be using just a regular rod for float fishing. It's two and a quarter pound test curve, fixed ball reel, 15 pound line. See, it's a carbon rod. I suppose I should be impressed, but I'm not. It's just a rod. Does the job for me. Longer rods generally cast a float a lot better than a shorter rod. So that's what we're going to be using, 12 foot rods. Bait is not going to be a sprat, it's going to be a sardine. Now you go, hmm, I've used sardines before and they keep flying off the hook. They're just so soft. But I'll tell you what I do like sardines for. The size. They are very cheap to buy. Yes, they are soft bait. But if you know how to present them, they will generally, generally catch you bigger size pike because they are a bigger bait. What will I be using? I'll be using a float rig. I'll just briefly go through it. Just a regular, one of those plastic type floats that you can uh, buy, I don't even know the name of this one. Not that it's important, it's just the name of a float. I've got it on my reel line. Obviously this is a pretend piece of reel line because it's, uh, I've just bitten it off the rod. So it's sliding there. Swivel, three SSGs or swan shot. Quite a long trace, probably a little bit overkill, but there, pike fishing, you can't have a trace that's too short, or wire trace. A couple of those Hooks, we always mention that somebody said they were seven pounds for four. I can't believe that. Anyway, I'm going to be showing you something in the future about a way around that and making your own hooks. Anyway, I'm going to be using that on sardines. I think these are size two, the larger of the singles, because it's going to be cast in. And you would think there, with the float bottom end only, it slides up and down like this. It's just going to keep sliding and sliding and sliding all the way up the line. Well, it would do. But I stop it with what's called a stop knot there. You can just see, just a, a piece of the 15 pound line. You, you put a stop knot on there and the float comes up, catches on that, settles down, and you can move this little tip. If you do move it up and down to change depths, just wet either side, and that way you won't burn You know this main line. It will slide up and down. Just wet it like this, and you can see the knot go up and down with your nail. Set it where you want. So, exactly how am I going to rig this bait that's going to cast so hard you shouldn't get it coming off the hook? Let's get out in a totally awesome workshop and I'll show you how to use sardines for distance fishing for pike. Let's get out there. Here we have the standard sardine. Now ordinarily you would be putting the hook in the top here and if you cast it really hard, it is a soft bait. Let me see if I've got another one here. Look, this one's been used. If you look how soft, look, they are. It just breaks up. And people go, oh, they're useless for bait. They are not useless for bait. They have a lot of oil in them. They are good bait. Yes, they are soft. And I overcome it by using a big game method, which is basically, you can either bridle rig or sew this shut to give you the support. Like a strap, we call it like a chin strap. Now, first thing you want to do is sew that mouth shut. And for that, you need... A baiting needle. Now I've no idea whether you can buy these in the UK if they even use baiting needles because this is my method that I use and I've never read anywhere else at all. I'm also using dental floss as a thread because some of the knots cinch down tight. So what I've done is I've threaded through the baiting needle here. If you look on some big game sites and foreign sea fishing sites you'll undoubtedly find baiting needles and thread because it's generally a wax thread that we used to use for uh, rigging baits for marlin, for wahoo, for tuna, for yellowfin. I've done it all before, rigging baits, done loads of articles on it. So this is the standard method. I'm not just making it up. It's a traditional worldwide method for rigging baits for trolling to give you support around the head area here, which is where you'd have generally a big hook for a big fish and you're pulling it through the water. Okay, so I've knotted double overhand knot just on the, uh, on the dental floss there on the eye and I've done a knot at the end here, because I'm going to pull it right through. Now, the, the first thing we do is just go through the bottom of what we call the throat latch here. Just push that needle through. Do not push it into your finger. And you want to come out. Be very careful with these. It's very easy to go in your finger. There. You want to come out at the top of the nose. Pull it right through. Slide it right up. And then... Let's get a bit more of this out of the way. Then I'm just going to tie an overhand loop here, which gives me my sort of anchor point. That's going to pull down 
gently there. Snip that little tag end off, keep it nice and neat, if it will. Right, so you, you got your anchor point there, and then you turn it upside down, and you go right through both gill covers. You'll find it's easier if you just twist it as you go, this needle. It's very sharp there. Now, this is an old bait I'm using here. So I've gone through, but then I'm going back through that loop that I've made, just there, to make what we used to call a chain stitch years ago. And that just pulled down nice and tight there. Okay, same again. A little bit back here. Now this is an old one. What I might do is make it easy for me if I just whack that body off there. We don't need to see the rest of the body. That's all done anyway. That's better. It's easier for me to work with. We're only showing the head, which is the most important part. Put the needle back through there again. I wish we had smell of vision so you could smell this. It's wonderful. Pull that up nice and tight there, okay. So you've effectively, you've closed the mouth down, so that's not, not going to open up on the cast, and you've closed the gill covers down there as well. Now, what I like to do is go through the front of the eyes, just like that. If I can pick up that loop again, I will do. You can see I've gone through. It's just creating little half hitches each time you go through. Right, now just see that, that knot sitting on top there. I don't want, I'm pulling it very tight, but I'm not going to go right through and tear the bait. I'm going to go again in the same spot. I've just about got enough. I'm going to go through again, just in front of that. About there. It's just, it, you might be able to feel it. There's a sort of nasal passage, which we used to use. I'll bring it up to the camera. You might be able to see it in there. That's good for... That slipped out, actually. That's good for towing fish. The nasal passage is very strong for live bait. And if anybody wants a live bait... For marlin, that's a good one there. Bring it right through, keep that loop, take it off the baiting needle. Okay, now I'm hoping you can see there, just point it out with it, there is that little knot, overhand knot. So when you put the hook through, you can see that little the little bridle, little strap across there. You want the hook to come out behind that, through the bone, there, right in the centre. If it's in the centre, it will cast straight. So not only have you got the support of the bone in the skull there, if I turn it that way, you also got the support of the little strap here, the chin strap, and these aren't going to flare open because you've sewn those shut as well. So that takes a hell of a lot. Look, I'm pulling this. I'm going to be careful. I don't want to hook in my finger. I'm pulling that really, really, really hard, and it hasn't pulled through. So there you go. That's ready for casting. I use a second hook. And this one would normally go through. I've done that just to show you. Let me show you on a full bait so you can see it as it's ready to cast out. And all you do is just snap those out, throw them away after you've had a pike, put a fresh one on. You generally only get one pike out of a sardine because it is a soft bait. Very, very oily though. So you show you that there's the finished product. There is the sardine. I'm using two of the double hooks spaced apart. I'm not using a smaller bait holder hook to actually hold the bait. I'm using the larger one. And there you can see the jaw is shut, sewn shut there. And there's my strap, my supporting strap. So I'm going in the bottom jaw and I want to wiggle it through the bone. I want to come out behind that, that strap. Now you should be able to see that. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that just there. Then that's going to be taking the weight for casting. But then I got this one that I pulled back. Goes just in the middle of the back. A little bit of tension in it, sink the bait holding hook in there and leave the large hook exposed. Do not put a bend in it like this because it's if you're going to twitch it, it won't cast or, or, or spin. You know, the water's going to spin and it won't cast properly through the air. This way, if I turn it around, it's hanging nice and straight there. You should be able to see that. Pull it nice and straight. And this, because that hook is supported by the sardine strap, we're going to call that, it's going to cast a long way with a float as well my float got to be worth using it's a big game method It's tried and proven as a support method for trolling i'm using it for casting does it work we used it years ago well there's only one other thing to do and that is to get this little baby out in the water and fishing hmm i could almost eat that myself <sighs> perhaps not
and the venue was Sandhurst Lakes in Surrey, which is predominantly a carp water and a big carp water as well. But I was there to try a bit of experimental fishing with my rig for the alleged pike that were in there. Now, I've only ever been there, I think once before, had a half a day with Mike and managed to get a pike and I'm powering out my baits as far as I can get them and see if we can't put this technique of the chin strap supporting that for casting that sardine and don't forget if you're out there twitch that float you've got to keep twitching the float let it sit for maybe 30 seconds give it a few tweaks and as long as you've got some sort of coverage which is what you want then you've got a good chance of that sardine going in front of a pike's face. If he sees it, I'm pretty sure with the smell and oil of sardines, you're going to get a take. And of course the other thing is, I've got my rod rests very high up. I'm not using buzzers, there's no need for buzzers because I'm using floats. I'm using a regular fixed ball reel, 15 pound line, putting them in the rod rests, watching the floats as much as possible so you can see when you do actually get a take. And there you can see the stop knot in action. And just watch how fast this drifts out. This is drifting through the frame in real time, this float. And that shows you, you are actually getting coverage. The camera's locked off, but the float is drifting through the frame. And that shows you the coverage you're getting. Get a belly of line in that float. And yet, eventually I get hooked up there. And you can see it there, guys. I've not pressured him, I've just got him in, I've just let him lay there. I'm trying to see where the other line is. You can see the float there. I see the other line, which I don't want bitten off with his teeth. I'm wary of netting him purely because there's a loose hook there. And if that goes in the net and pulls the other hook in the net, it's a cluster, and I want to get the pike out, back, away as soon as possible. They're going to have to net him, guys. Tell you what, people, it's not a bad pike at all. Not a bad pike at all. Over eight. Oh no, no, over ten. Oh, beauty. I'm gonna get him in the net and on the mat quickly so I don't want him rolling up, twisting, and making life worse than it is already. Whereas luck would have it, hook's fallen out, there's a fish. Beautiful fat stomach. Look, he's definitely been eating some of that, and he spat my bait out, the hook. I was so lucky. Down the back, here's a little leech. Let's get this uh, wasteling wet and then I'll weigh him up for you. So we're zeroed in. Hands are still shaking. After 45 years of pike fishing, it's nice when they still shake, isn't it? Binoculars on. Definitely a double. I can't even get, I've got to get up higher. It is 11 pounds two. Take a look at it. That will do very nicely at Sandhurst Fishery. There we go, people. Oh, I'm not going to lift him up too high. 11 pounds two. Crackerjack fish on distance casting with a sardine. Sewing up the head like I showed you. Did it pay off? Caught me by surprise. Let's get it back in the water because I want to get another bait out as far as I can. Beautiful fish. Lovely full stomach. That is a spanker, I think you'll agree. Lovely fish. Slide it back, double figure, first cast out on that float fish sardine. Fish has gone. But it got me all of a panic. Caught me absolutely on the hop. First cast, five minutes, 15 minutes to untangle that lot. 
got the float sorted out, got both floats out there and uh, I should have probably, oh Jesus, <laughs> flesh just gone guys, I'm not even going to tell you, let's see if I can get this all in one movement, just see if we can get this, plane coming over, you might be able to see if I can zoom in, see if I can find it for you, definitely, definitely, there we go, now guys you can see there, although the plane's going over, you can see the run, floats going away, Let's hit this fish. He hasn't pulled it under. It could be a jack just with a big side in. He can't take it. But that just goes to show you, I hadn't even twitched it. It just sat there. Let's see if we can get hooked up. It's well out there. I think that's load up time, guys. Always check that drag. Might be a small jack, this one. Who knows? I'm on. I'm actually on. That line tight is such a long way out now. I'm going to make the same mistake twice. I'm going to keep the fish tight and get this other line out of the way. I was lucky with that last fish. Now then, what's going to happen with this one? Tighten left. I'm going to change this camera angle for you people. Where's Michael when you need him? Oh, he's fish coming in, fish coming in. Can I get it down? Beautiful surface there. I don't know if you guys can see, it's absolutely like, oh, like burnished steel there. Let's see if I can get this fish up slowly. Haven't even seen it yet. What have we got? Oh, it's another nice one. It's another nice one. Nice and quiet. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. He's in. Oh, it's even bigger, guys. Even bigger. Oh. Let's get it on the mat. This is a lump. People, I hope you can see this there. I don't know they've got the right angle. I'm just opening his jaws up to unhook him. And if you can see in there, he's got my sardine. And he's got one that I struck off the hook. So they must really be on the feed. If I can get this one out. That's one that came off the hook. He's gone around and scooped that up. And then he's got my one here. hooks out. Actually he's got a free meal there. Let's get my bait out. There. What a fish. There we go. Sardines rule. I reckon 13 or 14 pounds. Binoculars on. And I'm still shaking for the first one. I'm even worse with the second one because I know it's bigger. That's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm going to go for 14 too there, guys. Let me show you this fish again. Do you know what? This one is as fat as a barrel. Absolutely. In good condition. What about that one, people? Hey. <laughs> two doubles, two casts. <laughs> I love it me. Let's get this one back. We're going up in. I wonder if they're going to get bigger. Look at that fish. There he goes. What a clonker. Beautiful. Lower him down slowly. Just let him relax there. He's away, straight away. Absolutely straight away. Get in, totally awesome. I'm using a really basic uh, rod rest here, just a plastic one with a groove in it. So the situation being, you cast out as far as you can get that float. The sardine sinks, 
the float or cock, you put the rod, making sure your line goes through that slot there. You can see that all rod rests should have a little slot so that any fish can pull line through there. If it feels resistance, it'll drop it, undo the drag. I'm not using bait runners, so if you guys out there, maybe not everybody can afford bait runners, you don't need them. You just keep the drag open uh, or slack basically, and then you know as a pipe pulls quickly, you know you won't you won't uh, lose a rod and reel over the side uh, of the bank. And then when you want to move it, you can just do the drag up. When you strike a fish, tighten up. Well, you know, as I was saying before, is so rudely interrupted by that other nice big double figure pike. I'm going to keep looking like this now. You know, I always talk like this, looking around because I'm thinking of the next question. I really am looking like this because I'm watching those floats like a, like a hawk. It just goes to show you, there's just been a little bit of ripple picked up now. So that distance casting, greasing the tip end of the line, just puts that belly, that little curve in it, which it allows it to drag around. So if I give it an occasional twitch, I'm covering more ground than it would be just static float fishing, if that makes sense. And the fact I've got those nose clips on them, you know, where I've wired it all up and whipped it all up with a, with a baiting needle, I can really give it a whack and get it out there. And that puts you in an area that maybe other anglers haven't pike fish. This is not a private fishery at Sandhurst, it's just a regular day ticket fishery, anybody can come here. But, sort of take a leaf out of the carp anglers books, a lot of them distance cast, you have to wonder why. Well, what can I say? Two doubles in two setups, two casts. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm still pretty hopeful. Almost time for the uh, sunshades. Now then, as you can see, there's a nice ripple on the water now, and that's exactly what you want. Not too strong. You want a nice, constant ripple, if you can, just to push a belly into the line, which sends that float round in an arc and covers the ground. And that's what you want is ground coverage. But you can see where the float is on the right, but follow this tracker line. This is where the line's floating on the surface. And I want to get round. You can see it curving off there. I want to get round and get it as close to overhanging bushes on the left there as I as you can. Now, the line's going towards the bushes, but the float's way to the right. So make sure that you keep tightening up on that bow in the line, otherwise it will drift in the bushes and you might get the float and tackle snagged up. Keep your net and waistling where you can get them quickly. Make sure you've got your unhooking mat, your long nose forceps, maybe a towel if you want to dry your hands because you're taking photographs like I do or weigh in and you're all set really. So a really basic setup for pike fishing, but you are not, repeat, not going to sleep on the riverbank. You're twitching those floats, letting it sit for about 15, 20 seconds, go to the other rod, do exactly the same with that one, rotating, occasionally you might give it a 30 seconds or a minute, keep watching those floats and just watch for anything different that happens to the float. It doesn't always go straight under to indicate a bite. Very often it can just stop drifting and you have to either tighten up on it. Now, what I did see was quite interesting was a man feeding seagulls with very, very expensive boilies. I'm not sure why you would do this. As you can see, every boilie he throws out, the seagulls are taking. Now, that strikes me as an expensive way to go carp fishing. I did actually talk to another carp guy there was set up in the swim as I was leaving. He said he never, ever baits up there in the daylight, only in the dark, for that very reason. You can get rid of all your bait which you think's in the water actually it's in the seagull's tummy not for me i'm afraid i want it on the lake bed and that's what you want to keep looking at keep looking all the time at your float you don't need buzzers you don't need bite alarms the float is your bite alarm you should not be going to sleep no, hang on going to sleep i think i have another take and the reason i'm saying that is I had a bow in the line, it's pulling right around, it stopped pulling and I'm waiting for the float to just dip. If it dips like that, it's been eaten guys. Let's see if I can get this on camera for you. Absolutely, I'm pretty sure, I'm going to have to zoom in because it's so far away. I think it's 
it's worth you try trying to all right let's get the camera set here we go i'm not altogether sure I'm I, w I would think there's a pipe there because I just wait for that float to bob. Just keep watching it, and you should see it twitch. Okay, it's got it now. It's gone under. It's gone under. Let's get the camera set up. Here we go guys, one hook's in the net, I'm going in carefully through the gills, just bend that bottom jaw, I can see the hook here, that's a benefit, lock the forceps, just rotate it round, look how easy that fell out, now it's in the net, it's a mess, but sort that out later, the pike's okay, and look at the teeth here, check those out, if it thrashes, I'm in trouble, they're the ones that are the point of no return for many fish. That one, I would think it's gonna go about nine pounds. I'm gonna weigh that one, it's about nine pounds. Let's get it back. What a session. One last glimpse at this kitty while the sun's out as well. I'd say that fish, I, I don't think it quite make doubles. Nine and a half pounds, nine to nine and a half pounds. Let's get it back in the water. Distance twitching with those sardines. I love it. And another fat bellied one this time of year in the winter February this is they're in prime prime condition Make sure you just keep working those lines, keep in touch with what's going on, you're actually fishing, you're hunting, you're not really trapping like you would be if you were carp fishing with you know, self-hooking rigs. You've got to work at it, but like anything in life, the more you put in, very often, the more you can get out. And so it proved, next. Folks, I'm on again, I'm on again. He's just hooked, just nicked there. You can actually see the bait in his mouth. I'm gonna try and get him on the camera for you. There he is, you can actually see, see the sardine hanging out. I'm gonna go for this one straight away, guys. I've gotta mess around. He's just nicked under the door. Oh, he's come off, there he goes. There he goes. I guess it's about 12, 13 pounds. Just saw the hook pull right by the net. 